Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start my presentation, I want to um, go like show the uh, example and um, to make uh, some advertising. The our book. <laughs> which is um, a real chance about the reforms which is going to uh, going on in Ukraine. I will speak now about this. And uh, as was mentioned in video, you know that we've done a lot, but uh, we have to do as much as we've done. And maybe this starts from the beginning. What is the government is want to have after the all reforms which is going on in, the, in Ukraine? First of all, we want to have the open mind people who lives in Ukraine and who can use all services which is provided by state on digital level and it's absolutely mm, transparent and okay, of course you have heard about the Ukrainian and corruptions and it's sometimes we uh, we you, you can uh, you can hear that it's equal no because our deal from the government side is to do the services as far from the people as it's possible. How we do it? We provide uh, digital services. For nowadays, we morning during the morning, se morning session, uh, the president of Estonia st told us uh, that uh, uh, governments should think about the, how the services should be um, oriented for the people. For example, so, so social services, uh, the birth, uh, uh, born in, uh, registering the uh, burning uh, children, and so on. In Ukraine, we do it. Now, we can register it online, the children. We can uh, make uh, social services through the internet. We can um, maybe some, some agreements th through the Trimbitas platform do in the internet and so on. Well, what is the next slide will be? It's a slide where we're proud of. The, it's our rates and how we grow in, through the, what, what we do and how we grow. And you know, it's a just figure, but after this figure behind them, it's a hard work of each people who working in the state agency for e-governments, for example, for in the government. and. Uh, strong political will to do this. And as you can see, and you see, have seen it before in the video, that we demonstrated good tendency for, for the growing, but not enough <laughs> for, for in our mind. For nowadays, for 2018, we put main objectives, what we should do on this year, and uh, what, what kind of reform needs for, for our growing. First of all, public administration. Because if we speaking about the, how we can cope with the corruption, we should say that uh, efficient governance, uh, it's a one of the way. That's why the priority for us is uh, public administration reform. And uh, also, as I mentioned, the anti-corruption uh, measures, the pensions, which is adopted by the, uh, our uh, parliament taxes, healthcare system, education and science, management of state enterprises, what is also the, one of the main idea to efficient management of the state enterprises, who is still state. Development of farming and uh, cooperation. How to achieve the priorities? We want to, what is the main idea? If we're speaking about the main uh, reform, which I, I mentioned before, uh, the public administrations. In, on this part, uh, I should say thank you to European colleagues, to Mr. Wagner, you for the, your strong believing in the, that we are doing together, because uh, it's a, it's a slow, we grow and microphone is low down. <laughs> uh, because we, you know how it's hard for us to how, how to uh, politically, in general, it's how to hard to change thinking about the directorates. What is this? It's a new structure or it's, it's a new people. And uh, it's a new people who wants and have the possibility to strategic, strategic 
development, f first of all. Uh, they, they want to analyze political, because for nowadays we, we know that uh, the decisions sometimes uh, making in the government for the problem, to solve a problem. And we do not think about maybe these decisions can provide or can be an other problem in the time. And that's why the, the main idea is uh, to start to analyze our decision, preparing it it's in different way, in other way. And um, how to involve the, these new people. How we, if we speak about the new people, we give them a new ways to come to the civil servant, to become the civil servant. It's one of the ways through the internet, using the digital technology, you can pass your, your documents for the, some kinds of position which you choose through the internet and just take a part and become to the civil servant to s certain s uh, governmental uh, 12, 12, uh, 12 ministers, state agency of governance, and secretary of cabinet of ministers also is waiting for these new people who can cope with the problems which was. But on the way of how to cope with it, we have the, some key challenges. And you see that mostly of these challenges uh, I mentioned how we cope with it. So the difficult mechanism in development collaboration, solutions for the service opportunity, uh, optim optimizations, legisl legislation process, uh, regulation, service. So a lot of problems we have, but we know how to cope with it. And uh, also come back to the Peter Wagner and uh, uh, this sh slide is how, how the EU <laughs> support us. Because one of the main idea, one of the way it's a civil servant have to be I, I'm not sure uh, I'm not I, I don't want to say that they have to be wealthy but they have to be good paying and uh, in this case we can say that he will think about how his work will be the more efficient for the state for the to whom he works for our strategy of public administration reform consists, as mentioned, 13 pilots, ministers, and agencies. We created now the 50 new directorates, and uh, we here is a link. If somebody wants to take a part in the, these 13 ministers, you can go through the links and see that it's absolutely easy to, to, get, to, get, it, to get the position. Well, what, what about our interoperability in the, of the registers? You know that uh, one of the best, maybe, not, not, not maybe, one of the be best experience which we uh, involved and we do it uh, in Ukraine, it's a Trimbita. It's a new one for, for nowadays, but it's starting works. And I hope at end of uh, 2018, we, it, will, it will be worked widely, yeah? And uh, you see that now <coughs> the, uh, what is the civil servant ag agenda and the political agenda. For political agenda, we should adopt it. The uh, pal parliament should adopt it, the uh, new law of, uh, on public electronic uh, registers, and the w w w w w which, is, which was uh, drafted and implemented the digital by default. What is the new services for the new people? Will be, it's a 20 priority electronic services for the citizen and business. We are la launched it in, during the 2017. More than 50 e-services we will be able, now, now is able for, for this moment. And uh, more than 100 <coughs> key administrative services we are going to provide up to the end of 2019. Um, so, how should I finish my presentation? <laughs> Maybe about the open data, <laughs> where we do a lot also, because, um, you know, 
as a post-Soviet country, we um, always thinking about the security systems, uh, about the security data, and about the, mm, how to our all sources will shoot defense against somebody. Now we do other way. We opened as much as we can open for easier work of that new people who will come to, who, who become a new civil servant in Ukrainian governments, in Ukrainian ministers, in Ukrainian agency. And it's, I'm, now I'm speaking about Ukraine. Who, who is, who is it, this country now? Now it's a country who is developed. Develop new services, who provides new possibility for young people who wants to be to build a new country and to be in Ukraine now. Thank you for kind attention. You see, we're a little bit behind. Uh, we are still working uh, without the digital. One of the reasons being that we all have iPads at the management level, but we have security requirements which force you every few minutes to type in a password, and that makes presentations and going through yeah. papers a bit burdensome. Um, thank you very much for an occasion to speak here. Everybody has been speaking so far about uh, what is free of charge. Uh, from the EU side, uh, we have to some degree free of charge support to Ukraine um, for many years, substantially reinforced after Maidan, recognizing the enormous efforts which uh, are made, which have been increased. Um, I think you all know by now the sentence everybody is using that in the last four years more has happened in the country than in the, than in the 20 years before with regard to positive reforms and that the EU is recognizing with free of charge money. Free of charge meaning grants and we have about 200 million euro a year, meaning since Maidan about 1 billion. In addition, Europe has made as loans available about 10 million and some of this, and that is very important to always think not only in terms of grants, the free money, but also the loans for investment. And uh, because a lot of the things that we are preparing now jointly, that the Ukrainian government is preparing, will require a certain moment also substantial infrastructure investment because otherwise you have all kinds of processes, uh, tools, etc., but not the infrastructure to run them. Um, free of charge, by the way, only partly, because, well, to be honest, because uh, some of our support, notably on the loan side, comes with conditionalities, conditions. Uh, so meaning it is free of charge, but it uh, has conditions bound to it, conditions which are linked to reforms. And these reforms we have over the last few years changed a little bit our approach. And uh, without having coordinated your pres I can build a, bit a little bit on your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, you saw the, the numerous reform areas where work is going on. Now, as everywhere, not everybody from those supporting can do everything. So, for example, the EU is relatively little involved in health issues, but we are clearly involved in uh, public administration reform, public finance management reform, decentralization, um, which is one of the big reforms in the country. Um, and there, I think you see already a little bit, we are much more into what we call the enabling cross-cutting uh, reforms than into sectoral. We also in some sectoral reforms are strongly involved, but we think it is at the moment key to really, as you described, rework the ministries, rework the way uh, policy, legislation, etc. is prepared. And that is where we are having enormous work going on together with you. Uh, digital is a little bit of one of these cross-cutting enabling issues. Um, as decentralization, as the reform of the public administration. Um, and we are quite grateful that, uh, notably in our interlocutors in the Cabinet of Ministers, um, we have now also found interlocutors who have understood that digital does not mean you give me 80 million euro, we pay a, a tax software and as of then our tax um, administration is reformed. That is how in some areas we started uh, four years ago and uh, with a lot of work done jointly and done with other international partners and Estonia a country that plays an important role in it, one has really jointly advanced there and there is the understanding it's about painful re 
working of processes, it's about many other things. Now, um, there are the many a aspects of the digital. Let me mention one where Ukraine in itself and without or only later on international support was leading the way in the public administration, the government and uh, the digital and that is the so-called Prozoro. Some of you might have heard of it. It's a public uh, and transparent procurement platform built by civil society originally, right after Maidan, rolled out and then only later on when it came to further fine-tuning, etc., international partners came in. But this is one of these examples of the many very impressive reforms started by the Ukrainian people where then international partners come in and support. And uh, Prozoro has uh, on the one hand the advantage and there it shows a little bit where everybody hopes that the digital can ho help more over time. On the one hand it is clearly helping in uh, fighting corruption because it creates, as the second important point, a general transparency in the interactions between the citizens and the state and the quality <coughs> in the interactions between them. Um, and uh, thirdly, also uh, an important point, it contributes to economic gov governance in many ways. And um, one of them is enormous savings, um, probably around a billion, I take the billion dollar in this case, because it's round, in, in Euro it's a little bit less, um, which probably have been saved uh, over the last three years because of public administration using uh, this software. Um, and now new steps in the coming days. I think it should go <coughs> online. There's now also, it's also turned into a selling platform to play a role in the privatization process, notably for selling off the thousands and thousands of small and micro state-owned enterprises of which nobody really knows what they do, and where it is but, but they suck money out of the state budget and where it's important that they <coughs> go out. So I think this is really showing that Ukraine started as of day one nearly, you can say, of Maidan on its own to do things. Um, and we are trying to come in and uh, help. Very concretely, of course, the usual work, one is ready if asked to send experts on all preparation of all kinds of strategic documents. You mentioned some of them. That is important to have a strategy. What is important as well is to look at the application implementation. We are very concretely working with Ukraine um, on the decentralization program, where it is about uh, a platform, and you refer to part of it for the exchange of uh, information, because Ukraine is currently going through the biggest ever change in the distribution of responsibilities and power in the country, uh, from the central level to the local, notably, a little bit the regional level. And all of that has to be accompanied by the appropriate uh, IT tools. There we have a huge EU program called ULEAD, in which Estonia and then in the, in the e agency are important implementing partners. Um, similarly, um, there is a bit of an activity uh, going on in other areas. For example, at the moment we are doing a kind of a threat assessment for which also Estonian experts um, are playing a role um, to really see can we medium term go into this area with bigger budgets because so far it's always been a sub dimension of other programs and the big question now is are we ready with a cultural change with the maybe management capacity that has been improved and hopefully election results that will allow a continuation of reforms in general can we in the future look into something more horizontal as a support program there uh, that is uh, where we are at the moment looking at many sectoral dimensions, integrated border management and others. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm sure you have lots of questions on uh, issues, for example, where we think that certain legislation is missing, but I think we leave that for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, colleagues, uh, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, well, uh, since it is an informal presentation, I mean, uh, I'm representing nobody but uh, myself, and let me tell you from my perspective, uh, uh, and uh, it gives me a certain liberty, actually. Uh, uh, I first engaged with Ukrainian government uh, back in uh, 1994. It was Kravchuk time. And uh, the uh, only memory, actually, well, I have some, but uh, that I had was that uh, the ministers, I was uh, advisor to Estonian uh, president at the time, and. Uh, um 
when presidents went to do their talks and the ministers uh, uh, half past ten in the morning uh, said, well, it's time for a little vodka. And, uh, well, um <coughs> that was extreme, of course. Uh, uh, but uh, um, I have encountered Ukraine uh, over the uh, years since, so it's 24 something years. Uh, um, I was uh, um, uh, assessing Ukrainian uh, uh, first, uh, uh, or was it the second strategy actually, in uh, uh, World Summit of Information Society back in 2003 in Geneva, and so our president was. Uh, current president was reminding in her speech in the morning. Um, and uh, uh, I was uh, some years later asked uh, actually to or uh, consider to, to start advising Yushchenko, but then he was unfortunately uh, poisoned. So I've had seen this and later also engagements. Now when I was last year offered to assess the Ukrainian uh, situation with the government, uh, then I was initially very, very skeptical. I uh, uh, hadn't seen any real change really happening, and yes, I didn't see, I mean, I wasn't uh, there for 2014-15, so that part was uh, missing anyway. But uh, 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 quite soon that we started to look into what is happening in Ukraine, uh, it turned out that uh, uh, a lot is happening. And especially, uh, I mean, my focus was uh, in questions of e-governance. And uh, what became clear was uh, that uh, uh, first, uh, um, uh, the government, uh, well, the change didn't really start in my mind. Uh, the Ukrainians might dispute, uh, but it didn't start with uh, 2014. It started when Groisman became the prime minister. Um, and then the uh, change ever since has been very rapid, very precise uh, um, and focused. And uh, it has uh, really targeted uh, uh, central elements that uh, need to be targeted. Uh, mainly uh, it is uh, looking into this kind of what uh, uh, we used to call them, or we call them uh, e-government infrastructure. Uh, I mean, it's not the wires somewhere or the computers. It's uh, uh, four elements. It's uh, access, it is uh, digital data, it is interoperability, and it's digital identity. And uh, Ukrainians have started with uh, Trembita. Uh, they have uh, started uh, with demographic uh, uh, registry. Um, and uh, with other registries, it's a little bit uh, slower. Um, but it's a huge work, and I hope the EU will uh, help there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, uh, in in that sense, uh, 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 this uh, focus in central elements is there. There are really nice strategies. Uh, so uh, we don't need uh, any donor support anymore for uh, eGov, digital uh, gov, and so on uh, strategies. You have very nice thoughts. Uh, and now it's a question and task of implementing those so thoughts. And uh, of course, that is a tricky part. Fortunately, you have also created in Ukraine a support structure. First of all, it's an uh, eGov uh, agency, um, um, which is doing a very good job uh, by uh, creating the team and uh, getting some, uh, well, uh, liaisoning, uh, it is situated in the center of government, in the cabinet of ministers, so it's not sort of uh, um, competitor to the ministries. It is kind of above them, and I think the strategic positions should uh, be maintained, uh, uh, because otherwise it will uh, end in squabbles as well. Uh, so the real change has been taking place, and that is very good. Um, uh, what is uh, the immediate steps, I hope they will be uh, soon, is uh, the finan new financing frameworks, this uh, national informatization program, or what, uh, whatever it is called exactly, uh, that that will be updated. It's a registry's law that that will be passed by the parliament. Uh, um, and uh, then the, the very basics are there again. So it is the hard work of doing things. Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, um, in that sense, uh, the uh, situation with the EGAV agents is crucial. I mean, you are the integrating point, uh, because otherwise uh, everybody is doing their own stuff uh, anyway. But uh, in order to uh, reduce uh, duplication, uh, race efficiency, and uh, provide the necessary tools, uh, uh, the agency is a place. And the agency has still to grow into an organization. You have more a big team there, a nice team, but it has to become proper organization. And just by comparison, you have uh, uh, 40 million people, huge country, and the organization is 70 people, plus minus. Uh, the Estonian comparative agency, uh, the EGAV agency here, is 140 people. So, uh, and uh, we think it's not uh, sufficient, maybe even so. Um, uh, look, uh, EGAV is the foundation of all modern governance. And uh, it is good that uh, Ukrainians have taken them uh, somehow together. I mean, the first steps for the EGAV uh, uh, changes were uh, described in the PAR strategy. And uh, uh, that was uh, very good that these uh, things are seeing in complex. However, uh, in PAR strategy, uh, you, uh, there was uh, early stress on the e-services. I mean, we here talk all the time about e-services. We talk about the open data, but the open data is just a byproduct if there is a data. And uh, if you don't have, uh, I mean, in your land registry, there is uh, 19 million uh, lines uh, records, but uh, estimated 26 million uh, land plots. So uh <coughs> it is not uh, too complete, let's put it that way. There is no uh, proper uh, address registry that uh, needs to be done that uh, covers this. Uh, uh, when we take the property register, it has just, it is kind of electronic reference book. It doesn't have the properties uh, there. I mean, in Estonia, when I go to the property register, uh, type in my name, I, I'll get uh, all the listings of my property. Uh, in your registry, uh, that wouldn't happen. And uh, that has consequences to all these other areas that uh, Mr. Wagner and you have said uh, where uh, the reform has to take place. So we need really to clean up the data. To clean it up is uh, easy. I mean, if Trembita is working, then we clean it up. But first, we have to develop the sources themselves, the registers. So if the legal framework is in place, then we get the data, and uh, um, then we are going. So I think uh, it is actually uh, going really well. Um, the current government is making the stress in uh, the right places, uh, mm, and uh, so there is enormous work to be done. Uh, I'm sure that uh, given that it is going to be continuity, uh, we can see it. But I have two uh, questions to finish. Uh, one is, uh, well, I'm EU citizen and a taxpayer, so I'm uh, interested why should we um, uh, support uh, Ukraine. Tactically, it's very easy. I mean, as long as they are doing a good job, uh, we can help. But I think there is also a strategic interest. And uh, uh, the interest uh, for us in Ukraine is that uh, uh, through Ukraine, if Ukraine is succeeding, we can send a message to all other countries in the region and, uh, well, uh, let's uh, uh, say it directly, because I'm not representing anyone, to Russia also, uh, that uh, resource-guzzling, uh, introverted, hate-based individuals suppressing regimes uh, uh, is no way toward modernization. And uh, uh <coughs> so building the 21st century state. So if Ukraine uh, citizens will feel the positive changes, the message reaches Russia much more effectively than through the mass media. And uh, so let's hope uh, Ukraine is going to succeed for your own sake, first of all, but for our all uh, sake uh, at the same time. Thank you very much and wish you good luck. Feel free to ask all the questions, but I have first three questions. <laughs> 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 this is my privilege. <laughs> I need to earn my salary somehow. Um, so my first question is going to Mr. Bondarenko, and my question is that you, you mentioned a lot that there is a civil service reform, so the civil servants must be motivated, better paid, and this is what I totally sign. But the, what is the acceptance of civil servants about ICT and e-government services? 
Are they ready to use it? Are they happy to use it? <laughs> ready and happy, <laughs> if, if shortly. Um, you see, um, if you're speaking about, as I mentioned uh, before in the, um, during my presentations, if you're speaking about the new uh, civil servants, we have to give them a new services. Uh, and one of them, uh, what is uh, we are working now under, it's uh, the internet for the civil servant, where they can communicate, where they can uh, work uh, under the one document together, and it's make uh, their work easier, because uh, you don't have to uh, send it by post or send it by email, you just, uh, in real time, you can work together on the one document. So, one privilege is you, you can work on this internet. Other one, as you mentioned, you you good pain and so on and so on. Uh, other one, you one of the agent of reform. So you know and want, and we give the possibility as a government, as a uh, secretary of uh, cabinet, of, uh, uh, as a ministers, give a possibility to write maybe something in the new history of Ukraine, new services new maybe solutions for the old problem and i think it's enough for the new people who wants to work for the ukraine yeah. but, uh, what about <coughs> but what about uh, those ones who are already working and maybe some of them even involved in some uh, gray corruptive schemes and and may, we may understand in one point that new e-government solution will el eliminate their illegal income <laughs> You see, when when you work on the uh, old scheme, l let us let it talk. It it's, it was a corrupted scheme. Yeah. Uh, you work um, separately in uh, your cabinet, write down something, put it to the some minister, and he he decided okay, it's it's work. But there is corrupted scheme was. Now when the three or four civil servants will wo work together. If even one will have the corrupt scheme, other three will show that this can solve other way. And that's why some control can be provided through the, these internet measures. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter Wagner, you, you, dis you presented us how EU, EU is approaching the reforms and support also. But what, what do you see? What is the biggest challenge for, for, for this broad set of Ukrainian reforms? What is the, what is the key issue to address and solve? <laughs> the key issue is that everybody involved, but also everybody looking at it from, looking at it from the outside, accepts that reforms at that size, in a country of that size, with a history um, as complicated uh, as it is, need time. I think we have a general problem in, 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 in business and politics nowadays that we are less and less willing to accept that certain things take time. Because I very strongly believe that, for example, transparency created, as you described, will over time change the situation. But, and that's the question, we will it will be a back and forth. This is not that we start today here, mm -hmm. in one month's time there. It is that we don't know exactly when we will be there, and we will be there in a back and forth, and a bit of a zigzag. It's neither linear nor anywhere else very structured in that approach, and that one has to accept. Um, what gives me the hope really is that if you look at uh, what has happened and the increased number of people who think the way you are thinking, your team is thinking, uh, is really different from the past because uh, when I was a few weeks ago here in an interview, I was asked the question, the, the Ukrainian thing is every few years you have a revolution <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and certain Fresh things start, start <laughs> changing, etc. cetera. And um, no, I'm not denying that that has been the case and, and, and nor can anybody explicitly say and concretely say where this current situation will end. But what gives me so much optimism is that you have so many motivated people ready to change and by the way, different from uh, one prejudice, not only young ones, mm -hmm. um, across all s parts of society. I think that is key. Yeah, thank you very much for this comment. Ivar, 
you mentioned in your presentation already a couple of um, <coughs> couple of issues about what should be done next, but maybe you can repeat it or add that. What are the actually crucial next steps for e-government implementation to support those reforms? Well, as I said, uh, uh, the, the crucial thing is actually now to see that the implementation process would also proceed uh, as uh, well as the strategies have written. Uh, of course, it won't. It's clear. Uh, the time, uh, the uh, uh, timeline that you have uh, written out is very ambitious. Um, um, but, uh, well, without being ambitious, you can't achieve anything. So I fully support these ambitions, but uh, you have to kind of uh, not waver, but do these things, uh, the basic things first. And I d let me just add that uh, I'm seeing also already positive uh, this kind of acceptance. I mean, uh, this uh, civil service reform and this uh, uh, track of uh, new reforming uh, uh, civil servants uh, with higher salaries. And it has kind of lit uh, light into the eyes of quite many. And, uh, and uh, I think it has made the life easier for to, to uh, gain the su uh, sort of support and engagement of young people uh, who could uh, uh, help you to do this. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I think that the major question is something we can't really uh, address. We can do these little uh, things with e-governance. I mean, f big things in terms of uh, resources and little things like you have uh, uh, this uh, Facebook for civil servants mm -hmm. now. I mean, this is a great example. I mean, I've spoken to Estonian uh, authorities about seven years about this, and it hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, uh, but uh, you, you when I started to speak to the e-gov agencies, they oh, we are doing it, we are launching it next week, something like that. So uh, uh, there are these things that help us, uh, and we have seen uh, throughout the work uh, uh, in different countries uh, how technology, and that comes to this question of corruption, anti-corruption, how it really helps. If you provide a cleaner environment, lots of people uh, instinctively go there. I mean, if, if the environment is uh, shady, smuggy, you don't know exactly how, it is easier to pay uh, and uh, get, uh, to get the service. But if it can be done without it, uh, it will be done without it, and it will become a norm. But it takes time. It, it takes time, and that is also for us, for the uh, sort of toners to understand that uh, we can't expect that they will uh, change everything in two years. Mm. Uh, uh, enormous country, enormous challenges, as you said. Um, um, well, it takes five, seven years, and we can see and be proud of, hopefully. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> Without the revolution. <laughs> yeah, if it's the revolution, do not come. <laughs> yeah, we have room for a couple of questions. I understand the first question. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Hadi Hidayati. I'm the Deputy Minister of ICT from Afghanistan. Uh, first, I would like to say congratulations to Ukrainian friends for the great achievements. Of course, the credit goes to the European Union. <laughs> and uh, the challenges and issue already discussed, but I would like to hear about the opportunities behind the, this achievement. Yeah, would like to start? Yeah. You start. Uh, <laughs> well, from our side, of course, we, we look for the stabilization effect of all of that on the society, because I think a lot of interactions between public administration and the public in the past mm -hmm. have been influenced by smaller or bigger elements of corruption. And I think generally with a cultural change, and, and you refer to the need of having that in addition, a lot has changed. If you start looking at first surveys, it's already a, re a limited number of sectors where people report that they themselves have over the last 18 months been subject to requests for bribes, etc. So you see some changes there. But what we are, of course, ex uh, expecting is, as I said earlier on, transparency, the creation of transparency overall, because that will help the people, those who are clean, and the majority is clean, to gather support and not to be isolated in a one-to-one -one or other asymmetric, unpleasant situation. And uh, for us, it is the overall stabilization of a, an administration, a government, a country, a region, Europe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If I may add, uh, but uh, Peter, thank you for these words because it's really what they what we want as uh, the government. For for us, it's really important to, uh, without any revolutions, uh, 
after the finishing war, which we have in Ukraine, to create the strong country, st strong state, EU state, maybe, uh, with uh, clean procedures, with uh, without any even thinking about that you can mm, maybe get something from the state just because you are a civil servant. No. You are service for the people who live in your country. And uh, for us, for, for me as a uh, state secretary who is as a result of the, this uh, public administration reform because we are the institution of uh, state secretaries just become a year, year before. Uh, and uh, for me, it's challenge to to do my job uh, uh, as as best uh, as I can because mm, for, from from my side, for from the side of Secretary of Cabinet of Ministers, uh, we um, we live in the past. A lot of uh, my uh, colleagues they used to use uh, some phrase that we have no, we we, we never do this they should do. They should change the ways how to work. I, and I should say that it's a ways, it's easier for them because the, a lot of paper documents, they go past. The digitalizations in our, no, they, in even uh, day by day works, they gives this believing for the people that they could, they, they can get a service, even never see that uh, civil servant who provide this service. But uh, let me say uh, that uh, the biggest benefit, I think, uh, is uh, to society, uh, that comes to society at large is uh, from the growing economy when you get these things done. And I was uh, very st uh, positively struck by the words of uh, uh, Prime, Prime Minister Groisman in January, they, uh, Ukraine launched the digital Ukraine strategy in addition to EGO mm -hmm. strategy, in addition to e-democracy strategy, more uh, strategies that was uh, to, to help the economy to grow. And he, uh, he was uh, not mincing his words. He said, well, look, uh, we, have had, uh, we have missed 20 years of our uh, development. And if we uh, take just uh, uh, this kind of regular economic development, if we succeed, we'll get 3%. That is too little. We can't uh, catch up with other countries. So we have to have uh, extra 5%, and that should come from digitization. And I think that was a very powerful message, uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, where the uh, sort of uh, um, real benefit to the society comes. Uh, that is how you grow the economy if you digitize it. Thank you. Thank you very much for this great discussion. Thank you for Thank all you. presenters. Thank you all of you, and uh, let's give them a warm applause.